not sure he's in love So there's a flea in her ear A bee in her bonnet and a tear in her eye Because he's not what he seems The lady plots and she skims So there's a flea in her ear A bee in her bonnet and her cares multiply Question now is shall she go or stay? Who's to say? Will I find a way? The lady hopes he's in love, but if he's really in love, his love he'll prove and he'll remove every fear. The busy bee in a bonnet, the flea in a ear. Oh, Gabrielle, darling, it's so wonderful to be back. What's that thing for? It's not for anything, it's the Eiffel Tower. Oh. After all those years in the Argentine, one does miss life's little luxuries. Oh. Do they all have lovers now? Who? All the women in Paris? Oh, pretty nearly all. Have you, darling? Well, I can tell you, Suzanne, as you're my bosom friend. I've got someone who's almost my lover. Oh, good heavens. Oh. Hello, Henri. Whoever's that? That is the man who's almost my lover. Henri Tunnel to name no names. You really mean that sometimes I turn him over in my mind? I knew it. You were so lively at the convent. I knew you'd have a romantic future full of lovers, duels, crying your heart out in Venice. I couldn't believe it when you wrote and told me that you'd sunk into marriage with a respectable barrister. <laughs> and I couldn't believe it when you wrote and told me that you'd been snatched up by a smoldering South American millionaire. Why ever not? Because you were always so quiet at the convent. <laughs> I am proud to be a Frenchman, members of the jury. And as Frenchmen, we can understand the terrible unhappiness of this young bride as she sat at home while her wretched husband indulged in furtive meetings in third-class hotels in the Garden North. Your Uncle Victor is in splendid form today, Pierre. Oh. <laughs> Pardon me? But... What is the suggestion of the opposition? Did she plunge a knife into her husband's faithless heart? No. That she shot him with his old service rifle? No. My ingenious friend suggests this young innocent girl relied as a murder weapon solely on a large plateful of snails. Members of the jury, would you believe that a true daughter of France could ruin the flavor of one of our great national dishes by so much as a grain of arsenic? Come along, Pierre. I'm going to be late for the opera. Another try of Chambis. Thank you. Congratulations, Chambis. Thank you. Brilliant defense, sir. You are absolutely wonderful, I mean. Thank you, my boy. She's either a brilliant murderess or an absolutely ghastly cook. Good win, Chambis. Thank you. Met my nephew, Pierre Chambis? No. Going to be a brilliant barrister, my boy? Like your uncle? Okay. <laughs> Lovely weather. Yes. Quite so. No, he said there was only one thing stopping him, however. Really? Oh, what's that? He has no roof to his mouth. We hope to do something about it. Huh? Uh, Here we are. Would you mind waiting a minute? Will you and Don Carlos be coming to the opera tonight? Of course. 
Oh, good. Everyone we know in Paris will be there. <laughs> Here we say, gorgeous, quite irresistible. Irresistible. Well, that's what's needed, to say the least. Now, I want it to be a surprise. Please have it sent round. But today, madam? Yes, certainly today, without fail. It's extremely urgent. Of course, madam. I understand perfectly. I have this delivered to Madame Chandebis, uh, 3 Boulevard Malzerbe, this afternoon, as a matter of extreme urgency. Thank you. Exactly what I want. Oh, but darling, it's extremely unattractive. Not to say discouraging. Discouraging? Yes. I'll take it. Grey flannel. Very nasty. You'd need something discouraging in my position. Well, I don't know what you mean. Uh, Your husband's not an insatiable... What? An insatiable South American. That's true. My husband's not... South American... at all. <laughs> Tournelle has just arrived, monsieur. He's waiting for Madame at the drawing room. Thank you, Charles. I go out. Uh, put the papers in the study, my boy. Give me a kiss. Are you in pain, monsieur? I can't even dream Come along, my girl. You should be helping Madame dress for the opera. Sorry. I was held up. Hello, Henri. Victor, you uh, look like a bride or something. <laughs> I bought a few flowers for them a year. For who? Uh, your wife. Oh, my wife. You know, I've been working so hard this last month that I've hardly had time to look at Gabrielle. No, that's all right, old fellow. That's all right. I've looked at her for you. Just from time to time, of course. Oh, extremely kind of you. She's all right, isn't she? Oh, perfectly wonderful. It's very nice of you to keep an eye on her. I was only doing my duty as your friend. Of course, my friend. And as such, it's naturally my place to... Keep an eye on Gabriel. Of course. Well, I must go and change, otherwise we'll be late for the opera. For. Keep my trousers up. I mean, those are your daytime braces. What about your beautiful red embroidered evening ones, the ones I gave you for Christmas? Well, nobody sees your braces at the opera. Victor? Well, do you like it or not? Goodness. Of course. Well, uh, 
uh, let's get some sleep. Some what? Well, I had a very hard day, and then the opera. What have you done with your evening braces, anyway? Uh -huh. Oh, they disappeared for the time being. They'll turn up somewhere. A person must be remarkably careless to lose his braces. <laughs> Just arrived by post oh. for the master. Oh, I'll take it. This is Jean de Beast from somewhere in Montre too. It's all right, Charles. You can go. My husband's braces. He must have left them somewhere. And it wasn't the Christian Science reading room. Hotel Cock Door. Yeah. Do you know the Hotel Cock Door? Take me there at once. The Hotel Cock Door? Isn't it a bit early in the day? Well, it's extremely urgent. An enthusiast. Uh. <laughs> Jenny, I've thought of all. Jump to it. Never knew a hotel where the bed got to be changed quite so often. What are you suggesting? Oh, nothing. I'll have you know this is a respectable family hotel. Husbands and wives come here. But not at the same time. My God, if I had that girl under me in the regiment, I'd make a jump about a bit. We're hardly open yet, madame. But of course, if this is the only hour of the day Madame's gentleman can get away to meet Madame... I merely wish to make an inquiry. About a reservation for a literary club? Well, most of our patrons find the afternoon more sympathetic. About a visit here by Monsieur Chandevis. Madame's gentleman? No, he is not my gentleman. He's my... Whatever he is, has he ever stayed at this hotel? Ah. Madame's the careful sort. Careful? Testing me out, madame is, isn't madame? I don't know what you mean. Making sure of our tact and discretion. You know, if I was to give away the names of our customers, you'd be the first never to come here again. I know he was here. Our lips are sealed. Look at that, then. Beautiful workmanship. Very tasteful. <laughs> they must have come from a very lovely pair of trousers. You know perfectly well where they came from. But I told you, madame, our lips are sealed. I'll find out. I'll find out, I promise you. I know you men. Stick together, shut up like clams. But let me tell you, you haven't heard the last of this. Madame, will you be back this afternoon? Madame shall have our best room. The bed's extremely comfortable. I don't want anything to do with the bed. A pervert. Pierre? Dr. Finache to see you, Monsieur Pierre. Mm. 
Yes, it's you I'm looking for, Pierre. I was told your uncle didn't take you to court today. He, he thought a case of rape might be a bit embarrassing for a chap like you. <laughs> your respected uncle doesn't know much about you, does he? Been to the Hotel Cocteau recently? <laughs> Why, I forgot you're supposed to be the virginal young nephew. As we doctors are always catching little plaster saints with their trousers down. But uh, isn't it the most convenient hotel? <laughs> <laughs> I brought you something. Huh. A silver roof for your mouth. At least you'll sound like a human being. <laughs> yes, I brought you a sounding board, solid silver. Oh. If you're ever hard up, you can pawn your palate. Oh, not yet. Shouldn't he wash it first? You never know where it's been. Your uncle's right, of course. We'll soak it in boracic. You should be grateful to your uncle, Victor. He asked me to make you that little construction. <laughs> Dear boy, I knew you were missing something. You can become a famous lawyer without knowing very much about the law, but you do need some consonants. Doctor, hmm? I'd uh, like a word with you. A short case of rape today. The court's finished early. I wondered, um, could you manage lunch at the club? I'd be delighted. I'd like your professional opinion. It's uh, about my uh, wife. Huh? <laughs> Gabriel, Gabriel, I have to talk to you. Now, you know what you promised me. Really, Monsieur Tonnel, I am much too busy now. This spring, you said, I shall take a lover. As your husband's best friend, who else could it be but me? That sort of talk's all very well when your husband's being faithful, but when he's being unfaithful, it's impossible. Oh, but Gabriel, you promised. That was when he had his braces. Now I have his braces, and oh, goodbye. Braces? What does she want to do with braces? I'd say suspicious, but not absolute proof. Yes, but Suzanne, what would you say if your husband, after having been a husband, and what a husband, suddenly stopped? I'd say, thank God. Is that what you'd say? You'd say, thank God? Well, that's what you say you'd say. But when a husband's been a raging torrent for years, and then suddenly, nothing. Spain's full of dried up old rivers, but they're still in the same old beds. Mm, all the same. No, there must be someone else. And you have got to help me find out. After all, weren't you my bosom friend in the convent? Tell me what to do. Well, now, let's see. Why not go to Victor Emmanuel? Have it out with him. Oh, no, Susanne, you'd only lie to me. I thought you'd think of something marvelous with your touch of genius. Yes, I have got that, thank God. Listen, there's one trick I've seen in plays. What, tell me? It's, it's pretty loathsome. I mean, I'd only do it to a man. Oh. But you take a sheet of highly perfumed writing paper, and on it you write a burning, passionate letter. Yes, to your husband. Oh, as if it came from another woman. And you end up by arranging a meeting. A meeting? Which you go to, naturally. And he comes to meet you. You've got him. <gasps> of course, you're right. It is rather loathsome, but the old-fashioned ways are the best. We'll do it now. Good. He might recognize my handwriting. If you've written to him before. But he doesn't know yours. You're going to write it. Wait, I couldn't possibly do it. For your bosom chum. All right. Now, what sort of writing paper do we need? Um, cheap. I should say pink. Lascivious and suggestive. How about mauve? Oh, it would be perfect. Some sheets of mauve, lascivious, and suggestive writing paper, please. Here. It ought to be drenched in a rather nasty perfume. And a bottle of rather nasty perfume. And uh, to eat, madame? Oh, I couldn't eat anything.
Dear sir, have you noticed you the other day at your box at the races? Oh, isn't that rather formal for love at first sight? Formal? Oh, yes. It sounds as if you wanted to serve a writ on him. I think it should be hot, yearning, and rather simple. Start writing again. Right. Uh, dear Monsieur Sean de Beats. Mm -hmm. I am the girl who couldn't take her eyes off you last week at the races. You see? Hot, yearning, and simple. <laughs> You're really living the part, aren't you? You were there with your wife and another man. Since then, you're all I dream of. Oh, is that going a little too far? Girls like that always go too far. I am ready to commit a folly. Will you join me? Join me, yes. I'll be waiting for you today. Five o'clock at the Hotel Cock Door. Uh, the room will be booked in the name of Monsieur Sean de Beast. The same hotel? Won't he be suspicious? <laughs> He'll be stimulated beyond endurance. Just to uh, douse it in that nasty perfume. <gasps> oh, block. What a shame. Yes. But you'll have to do it again. Not at all. That blotch will come in very useful. Why can't I stop crying when I write to you? <laughs> oh, you're brilliant. Look out, Victor Emmanuel. The day of judgment is at hand. <laughs> wanted to consult me about your wife? Uh, yes. Well, uh, as you know, Gabrielle is an extremely attractive woman. I do indeed. Since we've been married, I haven't really been in love with anybody else. Ah. What do you mean, ah? Well, nothing at all. Quite honestly, I couldn't possibly be a better husband. Ah. What do you keep on saying ah for? No, I really don't know. What's the uh, opposite of oysters? You mean as fish? No, it's promoting love. I mean oysters, the can-can, celery, spinach. They all promote love in a medical sense. But uh, what uh, what kills it dead? I suppose thick woolen stockings, cabbage soup, and uh, working out your taxes. There's one thing you've forgotten. What's that? The ninth wedding anniversary. You've just celebrated ours. Congratulations. It suddenly happened. Gabrielle said, we've lived through the last nine years, now we're going to be together forever. When she said that, it was... Uh, uh... The opposite of oysters? Exactly. You know what I've always enjoyed about love? The fact that it can never last forever. Those six months with the Belle Maxine. That summer with Lucien Gautier. Thursday afternoons with the Duchesse Dantine. And with Gabrielle, every year was like another love affair. Until she said, now we're going to be together forever. And then, oh! Put you off your stroke. I'm afraid completely. We haven't made a break since. Now, every time Gabrielle expresses herself willing, I remember what she said. Why, why not pretend you might part one day? Then you'll feel better. How can I? I adore Gabrielle and she adores me. I'm afraid to finish up in a couple of wheelchairs and push down the promenade at Nice. The least exhausted married couple in history. Think that... Oh, you're in here? Yes, we are in here. Oh. Now, good afternoon, Signora. Is this on the beach? Darling. Would you be more comfortable up in the drawing room? Probably. All the same, we are in here. Uh, 
cigar. Thank you. My husband wants to consult you this afternoon, Monsieur Sean de Vise. He's making his will. Oh, yes, of course. Well, I'm sure that's not necessary in his case. I had the honor of examining your husband medically the other day, Signora de Castillon. Uh, what a physique. What stamina. You should be proud. And exhausted. You're home early, Victor. I just had a short rape this morning. It didn't take long. He's probably not joking. This communication has just arrived. Special delivery for the master. Oh, thank you, John. What is it, dear? Not bad news, I hope. No, no, dear, just uh, business. What did I tell you? Come upstairs, Suzanne. Let us leave Victor to his business. Gabrielle, I brought them. Flowers at a time like this. Oh, you'd better go to the study. I'm sure Victor can't wait to tell him his news. Men. But, uh, shall oh, I yes. take your bouquet, monsieur? Hmm? Oh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Apparently, it was love at first sight. <laughs> Victor, Gabrielle seems to be very nervous today. Oh, you've come at a good time. Oh, really? What is it? Uh, hello, Doctor. Hello, Dolno. I've made a conquest. Listen to this. I am the girl who couldn't take her eyes off you last week at the races. You were there with your wife and another man. Another man? That's you, Tournel, the first one she saw. A blurred, anonymous individual. Oh, well, thank you very much. Since then, you're all I dream of. No. Yes, I, I'm all she dreams of. <laughs> oh, that's odd. Uh, don't you find it extremely odd, Doctor? Well, people do have morbid dreams occasionally. I'll be waiting for you today, five o'clock in the Hotel Cock Door. The Hotel Cock Door? If she knows that place, she must be a connoisseur. That's where I go for my little adventures. <laughs> oh, my goodness, she wept. No. Yes. Why can't I stop crying when I write to you? Look, it's drenched. Strong, smelling tears. Did you notice any girl looking at us? Yes, yes, I did notice something. You know, I don't want to brag, but uh, I thought it was meant for me. Uh oh. <laughs> for you? I don't think you were in the box at the time. It is Addressed to Monsieur Chandelier's? Well, of course, your name was on the box. So, naturally. Oh, you really think that? Well, of course, <laughs> it's obvious. Uh, doctor, what do you think? <laughs> I must be going, Victor. I have a long list of patients to finish off. I mean, uh, well, I must go anyway. But why don't you go? Me? Yes, I'm not free for this afternoon. I've got a client arriving about his will. Oh, that's a shame. Um, well, um, I was looking forward to another little adventure. Well... It'll have to be postponed. Oh, really? With whom? Well, Victor, I couldn't possibly tell you. But uh, your unknown beauty will do me for the moment. Take her with my compliments. Thank you. Uh, uh, give me the letter. Uh, no, 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 you don't need that. All you have to do is go to the hotel and ask for the room booked in the name of Chant de Beast. Uh, Don Carlos to Castilla, monsieur. Oh, my dear Don Carlos. <laughs> Chantebis. <laughs> Buenos dias. You wanted to consult me? <laughs> oh, yes, Chantebis, to make the will. Uh, who knows when death will visit us? Ah, yes, you're probably very wise. Come and sit down. Oh, Henri, you going already? Just to say goodbye to Gabriel. Who is that man? Henri Tonnel. Now, I'm sure you won't live a very long time. However, as you say, be prepared. <sighs> Here in Paris, the air is no good for me. Really, I find it very pleasant, especially at this time of year. Night and day, I am tormented with jealousy. Do you agree my wife is a beautiful woman? Oh, yes, perfectly so. Now, let's see, your name is Don Carlos... Now, do you agree? Don... You can understand. When I am with my wife, I do not wish to sleep. When she is away, I am not able to sleep. Oh, very restless for you. 
Any time of the day or night, my honor may be stained. Oh, come now. Sure, your wife wouldn't dream. She would dream, yes. But I hope she would not do. She knows I would be terrible. Really? Ah, yes. You see this little toy? Uh, put that away. Good heavens. Uh, play with things like that. No, no, no. No dangerous. Uh, just a deterrent. It's all the same. Uh, if I catch her with him, man, we will get him bullet in the back, which will pass through and come out of the back. Out of his back? No. Hers! What, out of her back? Oh, I see. You think, um, uh, you have like, um... I think. What do you mean, I see? No, no, nothing, nothing at all. She knows what will happen. I told her on the wedding night. It's charming for her. Paris is a city full of temptations. Of course. Don't tell me you don't enjoy some of the uh, temptations. <laughs> I must admit, yes. I can be tempted by you beautiful Parisian women and never feel jealous of myself. Very tolerant of you. But they are rather irresistible, aren't they? Mm, the best in the world. And so enthusiastic. Mm, not quite right. Oh, this might interest you. I got a very odd letter this afternoon. What is this letter? A complete stranger. She's arranging a rendezvous at five o'clock at the Hotel Cockdor. Truly? Who is this girl who writes to you? A mystery. It's not signed. Perhaps one of those anonymous persons. Well, a woman of the world, sophisticated, married, probably. Why you say this? What? Why you say this? Why I say this? Uh, epic one. No, it, it's the way it's written. Loose women much more straightforward, not so sentimental. <laughs> <laughs> good joke. A poor, stupid husband being cheated. Oh, that makes you laugh. <laughs> Such a good joke. <laughs> oh! Well, don't you feel well? Caramba. Oh, what's the matter? Her on the writing. My wife's on the writing. What? Mongrel. A snake. Reptile. My wife sends you letters. Oh, no, certainly not. Anyway, how do you know it's her writing? Nowadays, all women write alike. I do. It's hers. Anyway, I'm not going to see her. It's Henri Tonnel. Henri Tonnel? The man who was here? Good. I shall kill him. I must tell him. Do you wish the bullet in the back? Uh, no, thank you. In here. There? Hmm. What's up? And I'll kill you. I will give them all the time in the world. I wish them to arrive at the filthy French hotel. I will see consummated. Then I have my proof. I will discover them and I will kill beautifully. I need a drink. Filthy French drink. Filthy French lover. Quick, the hotel cop door. Certainly leads a full rich life. I'll just go and take off my cap, darling, and then we're off. Hotel cock door. <laughs> Ah, you! <laughs> Shameless! <laughs> Last! <laughs> Lexus! <laughs> Death! <laughs> Visitors! <laughs> Good afternoon! <laughs> Help! <laughs> Pierre, is that you? I think so. Open the door, for God's sake! That terrible Spaniard. Hey, hey, hey. Come on down. And Henri Tonnel? Come on down. Hmm. Good heavens, there's not a moment to lose. We're about to witness a ghastly tragedy. Probably a uh, double murder. <laughs> I must find Henri Tonnel and warn him his life's at stake. Hey, hey, hey. Yes, life's at stake. <laughs> what dramas? My God, what dramas? Turn <laughs> Monsieur 
Tonell, your life's at stake. Your life's at stake. Tell Charles to go to the hotel. What, what does he call it before the balloon goes up? Monsieur Tonell, your life's at stake. My God, it works. How about the balloon? Oh, Monsieur Tonell. The hotel cock door. I can't wait. But I must warn Monsieur Tonell. It's a matter of life or death. Some things, darling, are more important than life and death. Notice for a telegram. I sent him to the post office to fetch it. You sent yes. Posh, but he can't even read a telegram. He only has to bring it back. By now, he's visited every bar between here and the Eiffel Tower. He'll return here drunk. Again, Posh, you dog's dinner, you. Did you go to the post office? Dispatches in the front, Chief. Telegram, biscuit. To your post! Oh, they love you. You give such beautiful beatings. We've got to reserve a good room and show in anyone who mentions the name of Sean oh. Ah, Eugenie, ready for inspection? Ready, General. All present and correct? I think so, sir. Bathroom. Clean towels at the ready? Yes, sir. Excellent. Bathroom's essential. Now. Shall we test the ingenious invention I've just installed? Do we have to, sir? Imagine your faithless wife. Passionately embracing your lover. And you hear your husband pounding at the door, followed by the police. What do you do? Press the button, sir. Retreat! <laughs> And all a jealous husband can find is my old wreck of an Uncle Louis. Oh, my bronchials, my tubes. All right, Uncle Louis, no need to go through all that. It's just a rehearsal on parade at the double. All present and correct. Many make pause. All right now, isn't he? That's enough. Wake up, you lazy lot. On parade.
Yes, madam. Have you a room by any chance booked in the name of Chandevis? Of course, madam. Number one, our very best. Nilo Yakosoka! Mad? Oh, no, madame. Merely oriental. Madame will find this as every convenience. Bathroom, naturally. Bathroom's essential, of course. The wallpaper's tasteful, if you have a moment to glance over the wallpaper. Thank you, but I have no intention of moving in. Now, if I could just demonstrate my latest improvement. Please go away. Tactless man. Some people don't know what's good for them. Doctor, number eight for you. Number eight? Oh, perfect. But where's Marcel? Had to discharge him. Kept making passes the customers. I've got a new hall porter used to serve under me in the regiment. Hush! Never mind. I know my way. So you should, Doctor. <laughs> Good afternoon, Eugenie. <laughs> Take this lady and gentleman to number 11, as usual. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon. Which is Mr. Chandebis' room, please? Pardon me for mentioning it, but you are not Monsieur Chandebis. I'm here to represent his interests. Oh, yes. The telegram said we were to let in whoever mentioned his name. Madame's already there. Good. This way, sir. Thank you. Uh, tell me, how does she look? Not too broad in the beam, I hope. You should know that, surely. Uh, as a matter of fact, I can't remember her very clearly. Cheer up, sir. She may not have the sweetest character in the world, but she's certainly pretty. Well, I don't come here for character anyway, do I? <laughs> Thank Saving you for later, but now fate has brought us together. Oh, Chetanel, explain yourself, please. A girl is infatuated with me. She saw me at the races, and of course, the lightning struck. What can I do? She wrote to me. I took pity on her. But Gabriel. You got it all wrong. I wrote that letter to my husband. You write love letters to your husband? I wanted to know if he was unfaithful, if he would come here. Now, Gabriel, you wouldn't have me because he was unfaithful. Now he sent me, so he is obviously faithful. You really think that's true? Of course. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, so Gabriel. Happy. Now aren't you sorry you ever doubted him? Oh. You were wrong to suspect mm. him. And now there is no reason why you shouldn't be seen. Oh, poor dear fellow. Wonderful man. Of course, you are right. It was wrong of me to suspect him. Oh, my own dearest Victor, try and forgive me. Don't apologize. Just be mine. That will be my punishment. Let's seize the moment. Yes. Now, when our senses are inflamed. Yes. Almost unbearable. Yes. Oh, my darling. Oh, where are you taking me? There. There. What do you take me for? 
yet. You said that... I said that I would give you the best part of myself. Which? My head and my heart. The wrong part. Now, Gabrielle, you agreed... To be your mistress, yes. But not to go to bed with you. What? Now, do you think I'll be made a fool of in front of myself? Do you imagine I'll go out of here in the same state as I came in? Oh, no. I'll ring for help. Go on, ring. Wear out your finger. No one will come in here. Shine all you like, my fine, juicy nectarine. I'm going to have you. I'm going to have you! Gabriel at last! Oh, my jobs! My <laughs> God, God, Yes, Gabriel! <laughs> My bronchials, my jewels. <coughs> I don't know, some sort of invalid has suddenly appeared. Now go away. Press the button, then I go. Really, that's the end, bringing on spectators. Go back where you came from and stay there. I'm sorry, Gabriel, but I'm not responsible for... The... <gasps> oh, my God. Victor Emmanuel. It's my dear old fellow, thinking. you mustn't Don't believe all you see, you've heard that us. the circumstantial evidence may look bad. But we're completely innocent. She's right. We never expected to meet each other. It was the letter, you I see. wrote it because I thought there was another woman. I wanted to test you. Forgive me. Forgive us. Of course, of course. Oh. Oh. You've gone mad. Thank, Thank God. God. <laughs> oh, please, darling, curse me. Beat me, but not that terrible, cruel laughter. Beat me, too. And time, very I've got to take this vermouth, the oriental gentleman, excuse me. Madam, call me your little Gabrielle. Oh, uh, Gabrielle. Oh, please, darling, stop chattering about vermouth and oriental. Oh, it's vermouth. Kiss me. That's the way all is forgiven. Mm. Oh, now, let's see what again. Kiss me, too. I think you should. That's better now. I liked it better with a lady. Hush! Where are you, Hush? Here the devil's at. My chief's going. I gotta go. Your chief? My poor Victor. What are you talking about? You're Victor Emmanuel, my husband. I'm Posh, the whole porter. You ask Uncle Louis. He'll tell you. Uncle Louis? Who is Uncle Louis? That I don't know. Isn't he my husband? You married Bosch? Tragic. Do you realize what we've done? We have kissed the whole porter. Mm, what a lovely tie. Suppose you finish that from your Uncle Victor's wardrobe. I wish I could get something new. At least you're not wearing his braces. Oh, my God, his braces. However did we manage to lose them the last time? The last time was marvelous. Autre tour, the hotel cocktail. Got your braces, did you? No. We posted them on to you. Uncle Victor! Uncle Victor! Must be love. Go 
มเบาอะฮังกูฟิกเตอร์ฮัตเตอร์โฮเทลคอกดูฟิกเตอร์ไอ้น้อยไอ้ฉันเห็นคนเสียฟิกเตอร์ฉันร้องไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่ทำไม่
They can no escape me. Don't just stand there. Run away. Where are they? Hasta la muerte. Death will visit us. Time for the kill. Who is with my wife? I kill them immediately. Oh, put that food away. You do everything at the wrong moment. Thank you. I'm sorry. You dog's dinner, you. Who do you think you are? My name is Victor Emmanuel Chandebis. And I am the divine Sarah Bernard. Kiss me, darling. Yes, yes, sir. I'm a leading member of the Paris Bar. Oh, are you? I'll tell the Paris Bar to stop serving you vermouth. Got tight there, didn't you, my pretty one? It's a raving maniac. Sloshed! You are guilty, sir, of assault. And that way. You're here for my lawyer. Who's he? He's me. Get out of that horrible brothel creeping costume. I have no intention. You want me to break every bone in your body? No, thank you. And get into a decent, self-respecting uniform. Get your cap on now. No. What? Yes. Ready for the jacket? No. Yes. Now the boiler. Go and stoke the boiler! It's a nightmare. Take this to the post office. This is received and understood, madame. Some cheeky must last finish my uniform. the whole time. Oh, of course, the whole time. How are you, old fellow? <laughs> Still disguised as a servant. Don't you trust us, Victor? What do you think you're doing here, sir, with my wife? We explained all that. You kissed me. You kissed me, too? I did nothing of the sort. You forgave us. Forgave you? Why? What was it to forgive? 
What have you done? No, don't you tell me. It's obvious. It'll be a crime of passion. I shall get myself gloriously acquitted. <laughs> Help! Fires! The maniac. Stoke the boiler, I said, not chatter to the customers. Insubordination, Posh. Back to your cell at Dunable. Why is as quick as that, you bastard? Where is she? Where is my wife? Come on! I will shoot! yourself. Gabrielle wouldn't like it. <gasps> I wasn't inviting Gabrielle, whoever she might be. Oh, my God. 
disguises will deceive me. Save you, brother. and all wrapped around by an oriental. Oh, that's ridiculous. I can't even speak oriental. No, oh, very convincing. Now, certain things are beyond the barriers of language. I saw you, nose to nose with that slant-eyed Casanova. You must have been dreaming. I? Oh. I was here all the afternoon with Monsieur Plamar. Wasn't I, Monsieur Plamar? All afternoon, polishing the silver. What fools jealousy can make of us. Well, uh, I think I'll be off. Oh, no, you won't. Why? Well, how do we know what Victor's going to do next? You may not have noticed, but the last time we met, he tried to strangle you. Perhaps he's developed a taste for it. Men are all the same, ready for anything except responsibility. Responsibility for what? Uh, nothing happened. It's not your fault that nothing happened. And Victor doesn't know that nothing happened. And unless he thinks whatever he thinks, why do you think he's so angry? When he came rolling in on us the first time, he really seemed quite pleased to see us. He even kissed us. That's true. It sounded like a doorbell. Who could it be? God knows. Cheer up. Perhaps it's a fishmonger. What did you say? I said perhaps it's the fishmonger. Well, that's what I thought you said. Madame de Castillo. <gasps> You've got to find me. He'll kill me. I swear he'll kill me. Who will? Well, my husband, of course. Why can't he stick to fighting bulls? At least they're his own size. He chased me and Henri with a revolver. Uh, would it be awfully inquisitive to ask why? You mean he was hunting you as well? Before we'd even been introduced. <gasps> I'm not safe. Luckily, your husband helped me to escape. He frightened me a bit, too. My husband? I mean, he talked quite reasonably at first, and then my husband was after us. We tumbled down the stairs, got out into the street, and then he started looking most peculiar. And he said, who was that horrible, horrible savage? Anyone you know? Anyone I know, I said. He's my husband, of course, you know, as well as I do. And then Victor... Victor asked me to go and see the Cam Cam girls. For what? Wiggling their little... bottoms. He suggested a nice squeeze under the table. Victor, I said. Gabrielle wouldn't like it. You were perfectly right. 
Somebody rang. Probably means there's someone at the door again. Uh, uh, perhaps it's Victor. Oh, no, he has his key. That's true. I remember one night when Victor forgot his key. It was a cold, bitter night. The snow was coming down. This just is as I... hardly the moment for your anecdotes. Uh, Mr. Huh? Did I want to see Mr. Sonderby? Oh, <laughs> very funny, Monsieur. Would you like a little joke? It's about my uniform. Yes. Oh, absolutely killing, sir. Go <laughs> down to the stairs, sir. Yeah, wait. Good for you, sir. I'll wait. Oh, dear me. Yes, Monsieur. I'll tell Madame. I'm sure she'll find it very humorous. Madame. What is it? The master's downstairs. Well? He's waiting. Waiting? Hmm. Oh, what are you doing down there? <gasps> Pardon me? Waiting like a tradesman. Oh, do come up. Oh, I remember you. Well, I should hope so. I'm waiting for Mrs. Shondabees. Oh, my God, what's the matter with him? Oh, I remember you, too. Yes, monsieur. You're the poor fellow with the wife. Oh, please, monsieur. Well, you're the one who gives us all those lovely kisses. You all right, my darling? Steady now, old fellow. Oh, the fancy man. How are you, handsome? Now then, uh, take it easy, Victor Emmanuel. Oh, no, no, no. It's posh. Posh. Posh? What does he mean? Posh. Oh, you too. <laughs> How about another little squeeze? What could I tell you? All you birds together in the same nest. <laughs> Highly comical. Poor fellow. Is there anything wrong? Oh, oh no, 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 nothing at all. Oh, you're not a bad family. Just a little simple. Oh, madame, shall I send for the doctor? Yes, please do. You're off? Uh, excuse me, monsieur. Don't forget to tell Mr. Sonnevis. Yes, of course, monsieur. Of course I will. Hear that? You see, my uniform was on, on the peg, and then it's... Uh... We have had quite enough of this. I just want to see Mr. Sonnevitz. If you're feeling ill, you have only to say so, and we shall have you taken care of. If it's some sort of game, then it's very, very silly of you. Hey. Yes, you. At the hotel, you behaved quite stupidly. When confronted with the evidence, you took us in your arms and kissed us. Ten minutes later, you tried to strangle Henri. <gasps> did I strangle you? Yes, I'm afraid you did. Now, do you believe us or not? Yes, I believe you. Good. Now, let's just have one big kiss and never mention it again. Why stop at one? Smell that. You like a little kiss, too. <gasps> oh, my God. It must have been a terrible year for Vermouth. I knew there was something distinctly odd about him. You can't get near the poor fellow. A joke's a joke. But to have come home drunk as well. First of fire, now illness. Can't a doctor have any private life? My poor master's in here, monsieur. Oh, thank God you've come. It's monsieur Chandelis. I want my uniform. You, you want your uniform? Yes, I want my uniform! Victor, man. No, 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 posh, posh. Oh, my God, 
Lieutenant Strong. Who are you? Who the hell are you? No doubt he's undergoing a slight personality recession. You know me, don't you? The old medicine man comes round when we have a touch of collie wobbles. You don't know my hand. Pure friendship, I assure you. I want to see me a shoulder beast. I won't virtually come. Yeah. We are trying to help you. Stop making jokes. <laughs> Take no notice. It's all very well for him to have a personality recession, but to ask me to... Oh, no. I want a drink. Or something to clear away the fumes. Exactly. Have you any ammonia? In my pantry, monsieur. I'll get it. Now, Charles is going to settle you down, and then we'll have a nice, strong drink. Ah! Come along, monsieur. We'll put on your nice new dressing gown and have a good lie down. Mm. You're a very, very, very. Too bad you made it as hot. Oh, Don't talk so fast. It's you knew. Well, put your pallet in. I'm not my hand. You lost your pallet. Yes. Yeah. It's been a nightmare. I'm not in the cameo and two of you. And I'm coming. <laughs> I'm missing the cameo and the pink. Bang, bang. Later. There's no time for that now. Why? What's the matter? Well, your uncle, he's upstairs. He's not quite himself today. Oh, man. Oh, Dad. Someone promised me a drink. Oh, you got here too from the cocktail. You swallowed your gullet. No, I'm intending you when you say you don't want to make a will. And I'm going to. Give me a drink. It's terrible there, too, boy. What's the matter, Pierre? Monsieur, you're not wearing your lovely dressing gown. Of course I'm not wearing my lovely dressing gown. I haven't worn my lovely dressing gown since breakfast. Have you been drinking? Oh, no, monsieur. Oh, uh, get me another jacket. Yes, yes monsieur. Oh, what a day. Jumped on by a Jap, almost murdered by a maniac, shot at by a terrible South American. Leaping into bed with that idiot Henri Tournel. I think he's talking about me now. Ah, you dirty bed leaper! Out of my house! Let's go! Out of my house, too! Oh, out of my. No, you can stay. But we explained that all. I wouldn't have believed. Oh, 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 it was quite yes, innocent. That's a nice, quiet place to play domino. <gasps> out of my house! Ah, here's your drink, Victor. Why? It'll clear your head. Oh. It has a name engraved on it. Monsieur Pierre Chandebise, 3 Boulevard Manzer. Oh, that was a joke. It was in the worst possible taste. Now you've wasted it. Get out of my house! I'll get you, you horrible man! Oh, afternoon, Doctor. <laughs> Oh, my God, the maniac in my house. You'll never learn, will you? Spit in the eye of a superior officer, would you? Get out of my house. Desert your post. Lost your uniform again. Oh, Wander God. off into other people's house. Oh, help! Help!
the beast! Come down, for the beast. You think you can escape me? Never. I have a nose like a blue down. Come along! Or do you wish to die up in the air like a pheasant? So, we beat at last. Yeah. How are you? I am calm. I shall not kill you in hot blood now. Oh, well, the time for that is past. We shall fight it well like the gentlemen. I suppose you are a gentleman. No, 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 not at all. Never mind, we duel. Take a one. Uh, no, thank you. Take a one! You know the rules? Uh, no, I have no idea. This is simple, even for you. Face to face, about turn. Ten paces, halt, about turn again, and we each fire. Well, back to back. Ready? No. March! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten! Turn and fire! Run the steel, Chateaubi! You are putting me off my shot! Dead. On my bed. I open the door! Open the door! I must kill you! <laughs> open the door! Take you back, you pistol! Ah! <laughs> oh my god. Now get up and be a man. Savage. I am the moment of truth. No room here for ten pieces? Very well then. In the dark. We both fire on the count of three. Ready? One. Two. Three. Now, I kill you. Poor man, he's going to kill himself. Gracias a Dios, he's still alive. I shall kill him. After a short rest. broken out? There's really no need for you to kill anybody at all. Have no fear. At the moment, I am calm. I simply want to know. Well, what do you want to know? 
Why, I should find the twin of my wife's love letter in your handbag. Oh, well, it's really very simple. That was our first attempt. I wanted Suzanne to write a love letter for me. That one sounded like something from the bank manager. To write a love letter for you? Yes, of course it was for me. Oh, tell him all about it, Suzanne. Gabriella creía tener motivo de dudar de la fidelidad de su marido. ¿Cómo? Entonces, para probarlo, decidió darle una cita galante, a la cual ella también asistiría. Pero la carta, la carta, la carta, la carta. Ah, espera, hombre. Si ella hubiese escrito la carta a su marido, este hubiera reconocido su escritura. Entonces, ella me ha encargado de escribir en su lugar. Es verdad. Es verdad lo que ella dice. Oh, yes. As verdad as can be. How quickly people understand each other in Spanish. Something's happened. I was dead on my bed and now I've gone. Oh my God! Don't worry, I am calm. My wife didn't write you a love letter. You did. You wrote me that exciting little letter? Yes. We've told you a hundred times. And each time we tell you, you kiss us. But it never seems to do any good, really. I'm sorry. I made you jump out of the window. You made me jump out of that window? Of course I made you. You ran out of there and jumped out. No, no, no. I, I never jumped out of that window. If you saw me jump out of that window, it must have been uh, me dead. Good thinking. What on earth is he talking about? I haven't the faintest idea. Madame, this person insisted on coming up. The maniac! I was just walking down the street when my hall porter happened to drop on my head. I can offer no explanation. It would appear he jumped through a window wearing this article of clothing. That is my husband's. It's yours, dear. Victor? Where are you, Victor? Oh, my God. What? You dumpster! No, I told you to wait outside. Monsieur, you are speaking to my husband. Your husband? That's not your husband. That's Posh, my hall porter. Monsieur, allow me to know my own husband when I see him. Aren't you Victor Emmanuel Chandebis? Yes, of course I am. I, 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 I'd know myself anywhere. Then where's Posh? Lovely uniform. Where has he seen that face before? said, now we're going to be together forever on our ninth wedding anniversary. With love, there has to be a little uh, uncertainty. Oh, I'm sorry. I really am sorry, but I did think you were unfaithful to me. Unfaithful? What made you think that? Well, because... Because... It put a great big flea in my ear. I became horribly suspicious. I'm going to kill that suspicion tonight. After the opera? We're not going to the opera. Pain? No. The lady hopes he's in love, but if he's really in love, his love will prove and he'll remove every fear. The busy bee in a bonnet, the flea in her
Yeah. Dr. Finage to see you, Monsieur Pierre. Mm. Yes, it's you I'm looking for, Pierre. I was told your uncle didn't take you to court today. <laughs> He thought a case of rape might be a bit embarrassing for a chap like you. <laughs> Your respected uncle doesn't know much about you, does he? <laughs> Been to the Hotel Cocteau recently? <laughs> Why, I forgot you're supposed to be the virginal young nephew. As we doctors are always catching little plaster saints with their trousers down. But uh, isn't it the most convenient hotel? <laughs> <laughs> I brought you something. <laughs> A silver roof for your mouth. At least you'll sound like a human being. <laughs> yes, I've brought you a sounding board, solid silver. If you're ever hard up, you can pawn your palate. Oh, not yet. Shouldn't he wash it first? You never know where it's been. Your uncle's right, of course. We'll soak it in boracic. You should be grateful to your uncle, Victor. He asked me to make you that little construction. <laughs> Dear boy, I knew you were missing something. You can become a famous lawyer without knowing very much about the law, but you do need some consonants. Doctor, hmm? I'd uh, like a word with you. It's a short case of rape today. The court's finished early. I wondered, uh, could you manage lunch at the club? I'd be delighted. I'd like your professional opinion. It's, uh... About my uh, wife. Huh? Gabriel, Gabriel, I have to talk to you. Now, you know what you promised me. Really, Monsieur Tonnerre, I am much too busy now. This spring, you said, I shall take a lot. As your husband's best friend, who else could it be but me? That sort of talk's all very well when your husband's being faithful, but when he's being unfaithful, it's impossible. Oh, but Gabriel, you promised. That was when he had his braces. Now I have his braces, and oh, goodbye. Braces? What do you want to do with braces? I'd say suspicious, but not absolute proof. Yes, but Suzanne, what would you say if your husband, after having been a husband, and what a husband, suddenly stopped? I'd say, thank God. Is that what you'd say? You'd say, thank God? Well, that's what you say, you'd say. But when a husband's been a raging torrent for years, and then suddenly, nothing. Spain's full of dried up old rivers, but they're still in the same old beds. Mm, all the same. No, there must be someone else. And you have got to help me find out. After all, weren't you my bosom friend in the convent? Tell me what to do. Well, now, let's see. Why not go to Victor Emmanuel? Have it out with him. Oh, no, Suzanne, he'd only lie to me. I thought you'd think of something marvelous with your touch of genius. Yes, I have got that, thank God. Listen, there's one trick I've seen in plays. What, tell me? It's, it's pretty loathsome. I mean, I'd only do it to a man. Oh. But you take a sheet of highly perfumed writing paper, and on it you write a burning, passionate letter. Yes, to your husband. Oh, as if it came from another woman. And you end up by arranging a meeting. A meeting? Which you go to, naturally. And he comes to meet you. You've got him. <gasps> of course, you're right. It is rather loathsome, but the old-fashioned ways are the best. We'll do it now. Good. He might recognize my handwriting. If you've written to him before. But he doesn't know yours. You're going to write it. Wait, I couldn't possibly do it. For your bosom child. All right. Now, what sort of writing paper do we need? Um, cheap. I should say pink. Lascivious and suggestive. How about mauve? Oh, it would be perfect. Some sheets of mauve, lascivious and suggestive writing paper, please. It ought to be drenched in a rather nasty perfume. And a bottle of rather nasty perfume. And uh, to eat, madame? Oh, I couldn't eat anything. D. 
Dear sir, having noticed you the other day at your box at the races. Oh, isn't that rather formal for love at... Did she plunge a knife into her husband's faithless heart? No. That she shot him with his old service rifle? No. My ingenious friend suggests this young, innocent girl relied as a murder weapon solely on a large plateful of snails. Members of the jury, would you believe that a true daughter of France could ruin the flavor of one of our great national dishes by so much as a grain of arsenic? Come along, Pierre. I'm going to be late for the opera. Another triumph, Chanvise. Thank you. Congratulations, Chanvise. You. Brilliant defense, sir. You are absolutely wonderful, I mean. Thank you, my boy. She's either a brilliant murderess or an absolutely ghastly cook. Good win, Chandevis. Thank you. Met my nephew, Pierre Chandevis? No. Going to be a brilliant barrister, my boy? Like your uncle? Oh, yes. me, Lovely weather. Yes. Quite no, he said there was only one thing stopping him, however. Really? Oh, what's that? No roof to his mouth. We hope to do something about it. Huh? Uh, Here we are. Would you mind waiting a minute, please? Will you and Don Carlos be coming to the opera tonight? Of course. Oh, good. Everyone we know in Paris will be there. <laughs> Here we say, gorgeous, quite irresistible. Irresistible. Well, that's what's needed, to say the least. Now, I want it to be a surprise. Please have it sent round. Today, madam? Yes, certainly today, without fail. It's extremely urgent. Of course, madam. I understand perfectly. I have this delivered to madame Chandebis, uh, 3 Boulevard Malzerbe, this afternoon, as a matter of extreme urgency. It's extremely unattractive, not to say discouraging. Discouraging? Yes. I'll take it. Grey flannel, very nasty. You'd need something discouraging in my position. Well, I don't know what you mean. Uh, Your husband's not an insatiable... What? An insatiable South American. That's true. My husband's not... South American. At all. Thank you. Ah, come Monsieur Tournel has just arrived, monsieur. He's waiting for madame in the drawing room. Thank you, Charles. I go out. Uh, put the papers in the study, my boy. Give me a kiss. Huh? You in pain, monsieur? Thank you, Jimmy. Come along, my girl. You should be helping madame dress for the opera. Sorry. I was held up. Hello, Henri. Victor. You uh, look like a bride or something. <laughs> I bought a few flowers for them a year. For who? Uh, your wife. Oh, well, my wife. You know, I've been working so hard this last month that I've hardly had time to look at Gabrielle. No, that's all right, old fellow. That's all right. I've looked at her for you. Just from time to time, of course. Oh, right. extremely kind of you. She's all right, isn't she? Oh, perfectly wonderful. It's very yeah. nice of you to keep an eye on her. I was only doing my duty as your friend. Of course, my friend. And as such, it's naturally my place to... Keep an eye on Gabriel. Of course. Well, I must go and change, otherwise we'll be late for the opera.
Habe ich die Komm, bitte fort. Kann ich betrauen? Hör meine Brust. Hör ich die Tiere nicht. Seh ich dich selber. Ist dein Mund. If you drop this, Madame, this is my life. Oh. Delighted to meet you. The butcher. What are you wearing those braces for? Keep my trousers up. I mean, those are your daytime braces. What about your beautiful red embroidered evening ones, the ones I gave you for Christmas? Well, nobody sees your braces at the opera. Victor? Well, do you like it or not? Oh, my goodness. Of course. Well, uh, let's get some sleep. Some what? Well, I had a very hard day and then the opera. What have you done with your evening braces anyway? Uh -huh. Oh, they disappeared for the time being. They'll turn up somewhere. A person must be remarkably careless to lose his braces. <laughs> Just arrived by post oh. for the master. Oh, I'll take it. This is Jean de Beast from somewhere in Montre too. It's all right, Charles. You can go. My husband's braces. He must have left them somewhere. And it wasn't the Christian Science reading room. Hotel Cock Door. Yeah. Do you know the Hotel Cock Door? Take me there at once. The Hotel Cock Door? Isn't it a bit early in the day? Well, it's extremely urgent. An enthusiast. Uh. <laughs> Jenny, I thought of all. Jump to it. Now I knew a hotel where the bed got to be changed quite so often. What are you suggesting? Oh, nothing. I'll have you know this is a respectable family hotel. Husbands and wives come here. But not at the same time. My God, if I had that girl under me in the regiment, I'd make a jump about a bit. We're hardly open yet, madame. But of course, if this is the only hour of the day, Madame's gentleman can get away to meet Madame. I merely wish to make an inquiry. About a reservation for a literary club? Most of our patrons find the afternoon more sympathetic. About a visit here. 
By Monsieur Chandevis. Madame's gentleman. No, he is not my gentleman. He's my... Whatever he is, has he ever stayed at this hotel? Ah. Madame's the careful sort. Careful? Testing me out, Madame is, isn't Madame? I don't know what you mean. Making sure of our tact and discretion. You know, if I was to give away the names of our customers, you'd be the first never to come here again. I know he was here. Our lips are sealed. Look at that, then. Beautiful workmanship. Very tasteful. <laughs> they must have come from a very lovely pair of trousers. You know perfectly well where they came from. But I told you, madame, our lips are sealed. I'll find out. I'll find out, I promise you. I know you men. Stick together, shut up like clams. But let me tell you, you haven't heard the last of this. Madame, will you be back this afternoon? Madame shall have our best room. The bed's extremely comfortable. I don't want anything to do with the bed. A pervert. It's the Eiffel Tower. Oh. After all those years in the Argentine, one does miss life's little luxuries. Oh. 
Do they all have lovers now? Who? All the women in Paris? Oh, pretty nearly all. Have you, darling? Well, I can tell you, Suzanne, as you're my bosom friend, I've got someone who's almost my lover. Oh, good heavens. Oh. Oh. Hello, Henri. Whoever's that? That is the man who's almost my lover. Henri Tunnel to name no names. You really mean that sometimes I turn him over in my mind? I knew it. You were so lively at the convent. I knew you'd have a romantic future full of lovers, duels, crying your heart out in Venice. I couldn't believe it when you wrote and told me that you'd sunk into marriage with a respectable barrister. <laughs> and I couldn't believe it when you wrote and told me that you'd been snatched up by a smoldering South American millionaire. Why ever not? Because you were always so quiet at the convent. <laughs> I am proud to be a Frenchman, members of the jury. And as Frenchmen, we can understand the terrible unhappiness of this young bride as she sat at home while her wretched husband indulged in furtive meetings in third-class hotels in the Garden of. Uncle Victor's in splendid form today, Pierre. Hi. Oh. Pardon me? But... What is the suggestion of the opposition? First sight? Oh, well, yes. It sounds as if you wanted to serve a writ on him. I think it should be hot, yearning, and rather simple. Start writing again. Right. Uh, dear Monsieur Sean de Bees, mm -hmm. I am the girl who couldn't take her eyes off you last week at the races. You see? Hot, yearning, and simple. You're really living the part, aren't you? You were there with your wife and another man. Since then, you're all I dream of. Oh, is that going a little too far? Girls like that always go too far. I am ready to commit a folly. Will you join me? Join me, yes. I'll be waiting for you today. Today? Five o'clock at the Hotel Cock Door. Uh, the room will be booked in the name of Monsieur Sean de Bees. The same hotel? Won't he be suspicious? <laughs> He'll be stimulated beyond endurance. Just to douse it in that nasty perfume. <gasps> oh, blotched. What a shame. Yes. But you'll have to do it again. Not at all. That blotch will come in very useful. Why can't I stop crying when I write to you? The day of judgment is at hand. <laughs> you wanted to consult me about your wife? Uh, yes. Well, uh, as you know, Gabrielle is an extremely attractive woman. I do indeed. Since we've been married, I haven't really been in love with anybody else. Ah. What do you mean, ah? Well, nothing at all. Quite honestly, I couldn't possibly be a better husband. No. What do you keep on saying ah for? No, I really don't know. What's the uh, opposite of oysters? You mean as fish? No, as promoting love. I mean oysters, the can-can, celery, spinach. They all promote love in a medical sense. But uh, what uh, what kills it dead? I suppose thick woolen stockings, cabbage soup, and. Uh... Working out your taxes. There's one thing you've forgotten. What's that? The ninth wedding anniversary. We've just celebrated ours. Congratulations. It suddenly happened. Gabrielle said, we've lived through the last nine years. Now we're going to be together forever. 
When she said that, it was... Uh, uh... The opposite of oysters? Exactly. You know what I've always enjoyed about love? The fact that it could never last forever. Those six months with the Belle Maxine. That summer with Lucien Gautier. Thursday afternoons with the Duchesse Dantine. And with Gabrielle, every year was like another love affair. Until she said, now we're going to be together forever. And then, oh! Put you off your stroke. I'm afraid completely. And we haven't made a break since. Now, every time Gabrielle expresses herself willing, I remember what she said. Why, why not pretend you might part one day? Then you'll feel better. How can I? I adore Gabrielle and she adores me. I'm afraid to finish up in a couple of wheelchairs and push down the promenade at Nice, the least exhausted married couple in history. I think that... Oh, you're in here? Yes, we're in here. Oh. Good afternoon, Signora. Is this on the beach? Darling. Would you be more comfortable up in the drawing room? Probably. All the same, we are in here. Cigar? Thank you. My husband wants to consult you this afternoon, Monsieur Sean de Vise. He's making his will. Oh, yes, of course. Well, I'm sure that's not necessary in his case. I had the honor of examining your husband medically the other day, Signora de Castillon. Uh, what a physique. What stamina. You should be proud. And exhausted. You're home early, Victor. I just had a short rape this morning. It didn't take long. He's probably not joking. This communication has just arrived. Special delivery for the master. Oh, thank you, Charles. 